Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Bengal Tiger podcast, yet another breaking edition, as LSU, like we alluded to, they're getting hot in recruiting in the 2024 class. They land Kylan Bilio, 2024 wide receiver out of Terrebonne High in Homa. Shay, um, he he earned this one, literally, camping twice um, for the elite camp and then uh, came back with his high school for the seven on seven tournament and gave LSU no choice. They offered and at camp he committed and now it's public. Yeah, this was one. And remember a year ago, he came to camp, um, as a guy who had really just made that transition from heavy on basketball to really focusing on football. And he was raw, but he still looked good. They had him, um, working out alongside of Marion Miller, who was one of the state's top rising seniors at the time and you didn't see much of a difference which made you think okay a guy like kylan bilio has a lot of promise coming out of terrebonne he ends up then really focusing on football this past year as a junior returns to camp as you said twice he worked out at the elite camp then he came back for the seven on seven camp all in the span of a week and when i tell you billy we were out there watching mike denbrock the oc joe sloan the quarterbacks coach um Cortez Hankton, obviously the wide receivers coach, Carter Sheridan, uh, who's the assistant wide receivers coach at LSU and has been for a while now. All of those guys and more uh, were out there. Jordan Arsman, who's from the Homa area, uh, working on the personnel side for LSU. Uh, John Randall Belton, who does a lot of the recruiting stuff. All the recruiting staff were out there watching the seven on seven. And by the time Terrebonne makes it to the finals game against LCA, one of the state's top teams led by and LSU commit and Jawan Johnson, all eyes were on Kylan Bilio because it just felt like, boy, he is close to getting an offer. And right when that finals game ended, he got pulled aside. And I'm Frank Wilson, obviously another coach. All of those coaches were out there. They huddle around him. They give him the offer. And to see the emotion on his face when not only did he get the offer, but all of his, you know, his high school teammates are all there with him. His high school head coach is there with him. Mason Smith, who's obviously uh, a kid from the area, currently on LSU's team, one of the stars that these guys look up to. He was out there with them hanging out. Kyron Lacey, uh, who's from the area, was out there hanging out with them. All of these guys coming up and congratulating him on the offer. And we immediately, uh, myself and a few other uh, LSU beat reporters, um, interviewed with Kylan. And he gave us the interview. And it was pretty much, I'm committed. I'm in. And like, you don't want us to run that right now, right? And he's like, no, let me go home and talk to my mom and just tell her the good news. We'll get it all set up and then I'll announce. But this is one that it epitomizes a Louisiana kid who wants to play at LSU. The second he got the offer to play at LSU, he's, there was nothing left. I'm in. I'm committed. Let me go home and tell my mom and we'll get this one done. Yeah, this is why camp is just the best. We get moments like this, and we've talked about it before. You know, big offers go out or a commitment happens, and, you know, it's rare um, that you – and and to an extent, I mean, not every college, you know, has, you know, recruiting reporters out there. And, and you know, to see moments like this, you know, colleges do it differently. There's some that you, there, people are interviewing right after official visits on campus. It's all over the place. But one of the things that I think makes – you know, over the years, LSU camp special is these moments where they're fresh off a workout and they're fresh off meeting with the staff when they got the good news and you could just see it. And sometimes, you know, they're guys that you've now covered a year plus, you know, Kyle and Billio, we've stayed in touch. He was there for that private workout. We watched it in person. It's on our YouTube page right now. You can, you can go back and find it. Um, these are the special moments that these guys get to be a part of and or we get to be a part of in a sense covering it and it's just kind of rare it's a really cool you know time to 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 be there for a moment like that where you see somebody's life life completely change and you see it just how much it means to them and he earned it that's what we love to see about camp is going out there and working for it um right now three-star receiver we'll see where his uh, rankings ultimately end up but he's a guy with high you know i think he's got high upside because you can develop him and uh, we mentioned this in a podcast previously this week. You look at a DJ Chark, you look at a Russell Gage. Those guys weren't completely refined receivers by the time they stepped into LSU's camp and earned an offer. 
but they had done enough to show upside. And being from Louisiana, you've got that competitive nature in you. You want to be at LSU. It fits the bill to where, look, Russell Gage got brought on as a DB, made the move to receiver, ends up starting at receiver for him, now starts in the NFL at receiver. Uh, Chark came in a class where he was the, what, the lowest ranked of all uh, the high school receiver signees, uh, Malachi Dupre, Trey Quinn, all those guys were in that class. He ends up being long-term the best guy uh, and someone who's very much still starting in the NFL uh, as one of the better young receivers still in the league. So we love stories like this. I know South Louisiana, the home area, was rooting for uh, Kylan to pick up this offer. He got it. He made good on it with a commitment. We knew it would just be a matter of uh, days, really, um, before he would go public with the decision. And for us, Billy, it helps put another piece in place to a wide receiver class that is kind of tough to pin down on exactly where they go only because Louisiana usually gives them all the receivers and they don't have to go out of state that often for to pick up big time names. This year they probably will. And we've just been waiting around on who was that receiver in Louisiana beyond Kobe Young that would get offered. And we got our answer in Kyle and Billio. It takes them no time to get him committed. Now we're able to really turn the focus and say, okay, who else can they get to build this class out? Yeah, I mean, that's the the question. And and last year around this time, what, they had Kyle Parker, I think, committed by this time. If not, he was probably right about to cancel a visit to Texas, I think, and commit. Um, they, they were starting to trend for Jalen Brown. I don't think it had gotten to the point where he had moved up his decision date and then ended up you know, obviously committing to LSU. We knew Shelton Sampson and Kai Prion were guys that uh, they sat in good spots for, but this cycle with the amount of prospects thereafter, it's a little bit more unclear. And a part of that is also Louisiana, not having two um, slam dunk guys, obviously Kyle and Billy O, a two way, uh, two sport uh, guy who plays basketball, you know, threw down the dunk as far as why he should be offered and, and got it. But, you know, going into the summer, it, it wasn't a clear picture in Louisiana. Now it is. Kyle and Billy o, uh, is the guy they offer. They're going to continue to monitor Kobe Young uh, potentially and, and see kind of where the chips fall there. And maybe some of that has to do with how they do out of state in terms of reeling guys in. Maybe somebody impresses enough as a senior to earn an offer as well. They've had some Louisiana prospects on campus. Um, we'll see if they get more this weekend. There's still two more camp sessions for, for guys to come in and, and show out. Um, but look, LSU um, did this one right. Uh, now they've got to get some more on board. They do have JoJo Stone, who's uh, officially visited uh, uh, UCF, Louisville, and he heads to Texas this weekend. So he's taking visits outside the SEC. He's a slot, so Bilio doesn't really affect him. We'll see if LSU hangs on to him or uh, if there's some shuffling. You know, Jelani Watkins is one of the names that you and I have discussed a lot. He's a slot gadget type player, similar to JoJo, but Jelani Watkins has that elite verified 100, 200 meter time that you know, could be fun to watch in uh, different ways, you know, whether it be return game or maybe even running back out of the backfield or slot, however LSU wants to use him. Uh, he's a guy that that has that speed to break a game. And uh, they're also on Draylon Miller, Miller, who we talked about um, on an earlier podcast as well. Fredell Richardson uh, from Tampa, from my high school, is, is officially visiting later this month. Parker Livingstone is a four-star wide receiver coming in uh, for an official as well. But, um, you know, they're, they're also going to get an official visit from five-star wideout Cam Coleman. It's just one of those classes that it's not clear at this stage who they're going to end up with. And, uh, yeah, I I just don't know. I don't know who I feel best about. I put my mock 2.0 class prediction piece out. You look at guys, for me, like a Jelani Watkins who has Louisiana ties, but is just so quiet with his recruitment that coming out of Texas, do you really know which way he's leaning? Um, I know Draylon Miller, we've talked about time and again, Billy, as a guy who maybe LSU, maybe Texas A&M, he's going to make his announcement at the end of the month. Cortez Hankton's got some close ties to his father. They've got him to campus a bunch. But does the board – expand for like I, I just don't know where they go because they've got Bradell Richardson coming in uh, for an official visit later this month out of your high school uh, actually in Tampa um, they just hosted Jeremiah McClellan out of Missouri and he's kind of an Ohio State LSU guy I know we've talked about this on other pods it's it's 
it's tough for me to wonder, do they stick around and keep waiting on more Louisiana guys to emerge or do you start dropping out of state dominoes? I just sort of go back to a wait and see because I feel like I've never, and I've been doing this more than 15 years, I've never seen a point where LSU was hurting for receivers. And with the transfer portal, any missteps you make or guys you miss on, you can kind of fix it. I mean, they went and got Kyron Lacey out of the portal. He's already become a nice piece in addition and should be an even bigger one for him uh, this year coming back home or coming to LSU after originally playing uh, over in Lafayette for the Raging Cajuns and Billy Napier. So I like the start. I just don't know where it's going to go from here, but I'm also just not that worried about it because I think wide receivers one where LSU always finds a way to, to get a good class. Yeah. And even look, the receiver position right now is in a good spot. Uh, this is a class that even if they sign three, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, I, I just don't. Um, so, it, and if that means, you know, getting Kobe young late, um, if that means, uh, hanging on to Jojo Stone and signing Kobe Young, Jojo Stone, and Colin Bilio it doesn't like wow you by any means, at least on paper, but it'd be a good class um, just from a continuing to build depth. You didn't reach, you didn't oversign, um, those type of things. They're not in a position where they have to take five receivers because they have no one left next year and uh, they need to get difference makers. And if they swing, uh, strike out on those, then, oh my gosh, you've got to reach. No, you don't have to. And Part of that's the portal. Part of that's, you know, the position that the receiver room is in, especially after the 2023 class. So um, I, I like uh, the addition of Kylan Bilio. I think I think he's one of those guys that can really prove them right as far as why they should have taken him and, and certainly did. Um, but, yeah, it's just one of those positions that this cycle is is a little unclear. Um, it's the offensive offenses side of uh, it's the equivalent to, I guess, the, the defensive line um, for LSU this cycle. Um, we'll kind of see where the chips fall uh, on that one, just like we will at wide receiver. There's a couple. O-line is another where I just don't know exactly how it pans out yet, but it'll be fun to watch. I also think you look back and people will say, look, Malik Neighbors is probably in his final year. Maybe Brian Thomas and Kyron Lacey are. You're going to be replacing a large bulk of your pre presumed production in 2023. They've got some guys on roster, obviously, and bringing Aaron Anderson back from BAM is probably something we don't talk enough about, but excellent player there. The class they just signed was really, really good. I mean, you, you look at Shelton Sampson, but being able to go into Miami and get Jalen Brown, being able to go into Texas and get Kyle Parker, you followed that up with some, just let's say two more receivers. Let's say they finish with four. For me, that's enough. And if you feel like you got to go to the portal and get somebody, so be it. But I like where they're at right now. Love the addition of Bilio. Liked him. I liked him a lot last summer when we both watched him in person and thought, hmm, he's going to take off at some point. A year later, LSU comes in. They make the offer. They get him committed. And again, as we started the podcast with, and I think this is so important in the portal era especially, this is someone who wants to be at LSU. So he will come in, be willing to get developed, wait his turn, then stand up, you know, move into a starting role, much like we've seen a Chris Hilton do, much like we've seen a Brian Thomas do. Like those guys didn't come in right away and start as freshmen, but they waited their turn, they developed, and now they're playing as juniors. Colin Billy is a guy I like a ton. I think this was a really good pickup. I think we're going to look back on this one in a similar way we did when we look back on the Russell Gages and DJ Charks of the world. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, this is a, a, a pair of uh, reporters that are big fans of Colin Billy and LSU was as well, and that's why they took him. So another Louisiana uh, Louisiana domino drops. The Tigers get yet another 2024 commitment. It's uh, I'm wearing the have a day, but it should say have a week uh, for LSU, the way things are going, and it looks like that'll continue uh, as well. So be sure to subscribe to the Bengal Tiger, a dollar for three months. You can get Shay's uh, mock class prediction piece. We've got a ton of camp stories, a ton of uh, – uh, reaction to official visitors, previews, notes, tidbits, all the things are on the BengalTiger.com. So don't forget to subscribe for just a dollar for three months or $50 for the year and get your free Bengal Tiger Founders Club hat as well. So big times on the site. Uh, congrats to uh, Colin Bilio on his commitment as well. So that'll do it for this edition of the Bengal Tiger podcast. For Shay Dixon, I'm Billy Ambody. Thanks for listening. We appreciate you guys and keep hitting that subscribe button to the YouTube channel as well. 
Catch you next time with another edition of the Bengal Tiger Podcast.